Welcome to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast, hosted by former Army ROTC Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Rob Kirkland. In these episodes, we explore how to best prepare yourself to obtain one of these valuable scholarships for those applicants who wish to attend a college or university and become officers in the military. The application process can be complex and confusing. This podcast works to make it more understandable. And now, the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. Welcome to another episode of our podcast interviews. They're just so important to the overall determination of whether people get into Army ROTC. Really excited to go over some examples of interview answers to some of the most common questions that you'll see in your Army ROTC scholarship interview. We've been wanting to do this for quite some time. This gives you a look at how officers that are evaluating you, what impression they're getting of you through your answer. We hope it's beneficial for you. Sir, do Army ROTC interviews matter? Well, they do. Yeah, absolutely. For Army ROTC, it's worth 20% overall of the evaluation. There's a write-up that goes along with this interview. And that write-up, is read by the lieutenant colonels that sit the board. If there's a very much of a positive vibe that the the person who's interviewing you gives to the board, that can really help you get selected for a scholarship. It's usually the last thing that you do before you you are looked at for a scholarship. So very, very important part overall of the Army ROTC. Really important and such a critical factor, especially for students who've never encountered an interview before? Absolutely. And the thing is, it's something you can get better at if you practice. We've seen a lot of improvement with candidates who really take the time to practice. There are some really good rules of thumb to look at before we jump into these. The first rule of thumb is to always use your customs and courtesies. So even if you don't have a military background, now's the perfect time to start just using sir and ma'am and being respectful. Any other rules of thumb, sir? Let me just pile on that one for a second. What you're doing is you're sending a signal to the person you're interviewing that my plan is to become a cadet. I am going to become a future officer in the United States Army. So therefore, I'm going to give you the respect that you deserve. It's almost like you're projecting yourself into the future as a cadet. So using sir or ma'am, it makes a huge difference. You got to practice that. A lot of people just aren't used to saying sir or ma'am. And uh, you generally don't have to say it every single sentence. You should say it generally at the beginning of any sort of conversation you have with that individual. I'd say the other tip would be using real world examples and to tell a story. I like to think of a story that you can tell in about three minutes. And this should be a story that you can tell that you don't need to have note cards. It's a lived experience that you've had showcase your knowledge of what you've learned about what it's like to be an army officer. Don't just speak in generalizations. Talk about what you've learned specifically about what careers are you interested in? What kind of educational path are you interested in pursuing? What branch do you want to go into in the army? All of those are really good things to know and having actual conversations with cadet graduates, army officers, army NCOs, all of that is really going to help you understand what you're about to embark on. And Army ROTC is just finding people who know something about the Army, talking to the Army ROTC cadre, the cadets in the program, retired uh, Army officers in your local area, doing your research online through YouTube, being able just to demonstrate knowledge of the Army. I have people who I've interviewed in the past when I was doing this that couldn't tell me one thing about the Army. The final thing would be the Army core values, which was loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. It's the acronym is leadership. Doesn't completely spell leadership, but it's close. Leadership. And really the embodiment of the values that the army holds. If you can, in your answers, embody some of these core values and even talk about them verbatim, even say one of the army core values is selfless service. And then you talk about an example of when you are a selfless servant. That's going to show one is that you know about the army values. And second is that you're embodying them in in your life. So that's going to make a significant impression on the person interviewing. We are going to ask the question 
as though it's a real interview and then play the response. And then we'll give our feedback as to what we think about the interview. So let's go ahead and get started. Why do you want to join Army ROTC? What is inspiring you and motivating you? Ma'am, my interest in the Army and my drive to join Army ROTC, uh, they come from a deep desire to serve and give back to this amazing country that's given me and my family so much. Being an immigrant service holds a special place in my heart. You know, I've always been really keen to contribute positively to my community and to the nation that's become our home. In high school, I noticed there wasn't much structure for students who wanted to volunteer. So I thought, why not start something myself? That's how I ended up founding our service club. It was tough, you know, getting approvals, organizing everything and getting my peers on board. But it was um, definitely worth it. We worked on all sorts of projects from local cleanups to fundraising for bigger causes. It really showed me how teamwork and leadership can make a real impact. It became a huge part of my high school life. It wasn't just about volunteering. It was about bringing people together to do something meaningful. And that's where I saw the connection with the Army values. The more I learned about the Army, the more I saw how its values of loyalty duty, respect, and uh, selfless service matched what I had experienced and believed in, choosing Army ROTC felt like the right step forward. It's like taking what I started in high school to the next level, you know? It's about developing my leadership skills even more and contributing to something as big as national security in the intelligence community, which is what I'm interested in. I see ROTC as an opportunity to like grow and serve in ways I've always wanted to. So yeah, joining the army isn't just about the military aspect for me. I'm really excited about the chance to develop and serve in army ROTC and one day as a second lieutenant. Starting that service club in high school was just the beginning. And now I'm looking forward to all the challenges and opportunities that army ROTC has to offer. What's your take on this one? I think it's a solid answer. One that I typically see with candidates. Again, a great story about why she's doing what she's doing. She goes back to her experience with her service project she's doing and how that motivated her to look at Army ROTC. So I think that's definitely a positive. Her discussion of Army values is certainly way above average. Just be able to list them off is going to impress the people that are evaluating you. I'd say the third thing would be that Her career choice and what she's interested in doing, I think, was certainly a positive. It was certainly a solid, a solid answer for that question. I feel as though she went into the team perspective pretty well. She Mm -hmm. talked about serving her community. She could have gone a little bit more into that about the leadership side of the house there. How many people did she bring into the club? What kind of impact were they able to make with that she wants to do the same thing in the Army? If you had to give this a score from 1 to 10 with 5 being average, 10 being just incredible, the best answer you've ever heard, and 1 being they really need some significant work, what would you grade this response? The Army values, listing those off was really, really good. I think it's just a generic answer. I mean, you're not really talking anything about the Army. You're not not going into specifics, not talking about anything about Army ROTC other than just saying you want to do it. I'd give it a five. Okay, I'd give it a six because it was very, okay. there was a lot of selfless servant attitude okay. in there. Okay, I have no problem with six. I'm Maybe I'm just an tough grader. I don't know. But. <laughs> well, I think you are, sir. Let me ask you this. As a professor of military studies, how many students did you interview? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds. And I mean, I would say on average, they were about like this or or a little bit less than this. It's a solid average answer with an army values thing kind of inserted in there. But it doesn't get into that like eight or nine that indicates to me that this is somebody who really knows what they want and, and, and army ROTC. This is because they did their homework. You could answer that this and you could insert Navy ROTC in there. You can insert Air Force ROTC. You can insert Peace Corps. You, you, you'd have the same answer. If you were coaching this candidate, what advice would you give her? I'd say go on YouTube, learn about the Army a little bit and talk about that because this is your opportunity to talk about why you want to go into the Army. What's attracting you to the Army? Find a 
retired officer nearby that, that can talk to you a little bit about the army. If I'm interviewing this person or I'm being, I'm listening to this person, I, I, I can't really say one way or the other. All right. Describe a setback or failure you experienced. How did you resolve it? And what did you learn from it? Sir, I've had plenty of them, but one of the ones that I think I will never forget about is when I was in middle school. I was on a little league baseball team. And at that time, baseball was my life. I've been doing it for over 10 years. Always did baseball in the regular school year and in summer. But I, about three games into my season in middle school, I made a big mistake. I was playing pickleball and I saw other people playing pickleball with a tennis ball. And I thought, oh, I want to play right. And I wasn't thinking. And I threw a ball as hard as I could into a wall. And with my arm doing practices and baseballs, I was used to a heavier object like a baseball. And when you switch to a lighter ball and you use the same amount of pressure, it's not going to end well. And it didn't end well for my arm. I knew immediately when I injured it, I couldn't even lift it. It was stuck there. It was a constant throbbing for almost a week. I couldn't move it up past my chest without feeling pain. And so I really had to think about this, right? I talked with me dad, who was really big on baseball with me. And I told him, hey, I really messed up. I made a mistake. I wasn't thinking. What do I do? And so he told me that he really couldn't tell me. I really had to make a decision. Am I going to stop playing baseball or am I going to try to rehab this? And I'm not saying that this is the worst injury I've ever had. I just really couldn't throw with it. But I made a decision. I decided I knew I couldn't throw, but I could throw with my left. So what I did is I, I, I couldn't bat, but I could play left field. So I decided that in the future games, I would be playing left field and I switched gloves and I threw lefty and it was rough, but I got through it. I got to stay as a part of a team and I think that was big. And I also had to learn how to take responsibility every morning. I had to ice it and do stretches because I really wanted to get back out there on the field at 100%. It really taught me a lot. It taught me that, hey, regardless of the situation, there's always something you can do. There's always a possibility. And even if I couldn't play left field, I knew I could still be out there with my team and I could still learn from them and watch and be a supporter. And I think through that, I've learned what it means to be tough. It's thinking outside of the box and continuing to pursue what you want to do. All right, Trish, what do you think positives with this answer here? Sir, I could visualize the story. I could see his arm being injured. You could definitely tell that he feels like he still wanted to be there for the team. And he wanted to support his team as much as he possibly could. How this is going to help him be a better cadet in his unit, in his ROTC unit or at West Point. What are some challenges that could arise when he's a cadet that this would apply to? So I really did like the fact that he brought up the team. He was there for his team. But there's some really good Army Corps values that he could have specifically mentioned and he didn't. So I agree with you, Trish, on, on this. So the positives was certainly the story. When I talk to candidates and coach them, I, I tell them, don't talk about middle school. There's just not a lot of applicability to being a senior in high school. If I was working with this candidate, I would tell them, don't even mention that you were in middle school. So I think that would be something I would cut out. He's got to, at the end, talk about the Army values in some sort of way or talk about how this experience can be applied to whatever he's going to face in the future in, in the Army or in school or, or whatever, wherever. Trish, what do you think as far as a, a score for this one? I would say six out of 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I think I would give it a six. Maybe I would even go a, a seven high six on this one. I think he's got a great base there. And with a little bit of just pushing towards talking about the army a little bit more, I think that could certainly go into the eights or nines, certainly. Let me go on to the next one here which is, tell me about a time you face an ethical dilemma. What happened and what did you learn from the experience? A time I faced an ethical dilemma was when one of my friends started to go down a bad path. Integrity is really important to me. I believe it is having a strong moral and ethical code and being able to follow that and stay consistent with your beliefs through any sort of circumstance, whether it's an easy time or a very hard time and a time where I had to do that. One of my best friends at the beginning of high school, he was starting to go down the wrong path starting to do a lot of partying and drugs and alcohol and things like that. I could have just let him do his thing, but I felt it was my duty to try and help him. So I tried to hang out with him. I got him to join DECA, which is a business club at our school sophomore year. And he really enjoyed it. So me and him were like in a group together and I got to hang out with him a lot. And I think I, I thought that he was happier with everything going on and sort of finding his purpose a little bit. 
However, after sophomore year, when COVID came, I tried to reach out to him a couple times and he just started to ignore me. And I started to see on like social media and stuff that he was sort of starting to go back to what he used to be doing. And I told him, I said, hey, that's not a good idea. I really think you should try to stay involved in DECA because he wasn't thinking about doing it the next year. And then I heard that he had been drinking and driving a good amount. So I, I talked to him. I said, hey, can we meet? And we met and had lunch. And I talked to him and I said that that is a terrible thing to do and that I really need you to be with me for this next year for DECA to, so that we can hang out and get involved and like a marketing plan and, and spend our time doing that on stuff that could, you know, help us for our future. And he said that, yeah, I'd be willing to do that. But then after that, he again just left me. He, he ghosted me, I guess. He stopped messaging me. I tried to meet with him a couple more times to tell him that, to try to help him out. I talked to some of the teachers because he, he was a DECA officer for the beginning of junior year, but he stopped showing up to class. And the teacher was thinking about kicking him out. So I talked to the teacher and she talked to him, but he still just kept going down this path. And even though I spent two years trying to help him and be a good friend and try to lead him down the right path, it ended up not being successful. Still, I learned that you can't give up on people. I know I'll encounter situations as an army officer where I need to lead by example and help those I'm leading. And it's my duty to help them as best I can. What do you think? What, what's your impression of this individual? Man, what a story. That's a great story. That's, that's a true friend. That's somebody who's very selfless, who cares about others. And he could have stood by and not done anything, but he again and again reached out to this person and tried to help him. So I just think that's a fantastic answer. I think he did a really good job at the end, too, of relating it to his future as an Army officer. Um, and that he's going to have to lead by example as an Army officer, whether it's for his peers, his fellow junior officers, or for his enlisted or his ward officers. He needs to set the standard and he needs to do the right thing and act with integrity. So overall, great answer. What did you think, sir? Yeah, I love that answer. You feel inspired by this individual. You feel like this individual cares about others, that a, it's a person that you would want. The person who's listening to this is saying to themselves, is this a person that I would want to have my son or daughter be the leader of? Is this a person that I would want to have be a lieutenant or an ensign in, you know, whatever, in my unit? Is this a person that cares for other people? With this person, you just feel like this is a person that I want. He just has something that the average candidate doesn't have. It's just there's a depth to that this answer that inspires you. Even though he didn't mention anything about the Army values, it's almost like you feel the Army values emanating from this individual. I think he knocked it out of the park. I mean, uh, nine. Nine out of 10, for sure. The only way it could be better is if he brought in the, the core values of, of duty, personal mm -hmm. courage, integrity, honor. But you're right. You can feel it emanating from him. So he did a great job. Absolutely. Another question is, tell me about a time you led others in a project or goal. How did you organize your efforts and how will, how will that make you a better leader going forward? Yes, sir. I think my main extracurricular throughout high school has been yearbook. It's definitely been my biggest leadership role because Basically, you have a committee of people, and at the end of the year, you want to create a book. But I think there's a lot of layers underneath that. I think there's a lot of pressure because obviously the yearbook is something that people are going to see for the rest of their lives. And it's something that a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of intricacies. I'm communicating with publishers and not just communicating with your members, but also communicating with your adult advisors and the teachers who are helping you out. I think that the whole situation has really taught me a lot and it's taught me good communication skills because at my school, which is a sixth through 12th grade school, I talk to the littlest of sixth graders and the educators and they all have different ways of communicating what they want to you. But I think I've definitely learned how to interpret different modes of communication. I've definitely gotten better at changing the way I speak to help the other person understand more. So I think I'm very good at communicating with different people. I also think a big part of yearbook is organization because you need to be organized in order to complete a deadline. And the other one is just completing deadlines and making sure that you're always ready. Because the thing with yearbook is we have three major deadlines. And if you don't get your book in by then, by the final, final deadline, then it's not going to be ready to print. I'm very good at keeping organized, being able to communicate with everyone. 
and meeting the deadlines that I need to. And I think this all, all these skills really set me up to be an amazing leader in ROTC. I've learned is that I need to be a good leader in order to make a good yearbook. It's all about the leader showing people how they can act in order to create a more of stable environment, especially for something as intricate as yearbook. I still have a lot more to learn as a leader, but I think I channel a lot of the army values, especially with a group as big as like 50 people, which is what yearbook is. I really love the answer. There's a, just a couple of little tiny areas like crowning yourself an amazing leader. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I crown myself an amazing leader even now. What you want to do is you want to avoid the inflating your own ego and, and you always want to be a person who's modest. Take out the amazing leader that you're the next George Patton. But I really like the overall tone of it where he goes into the complexity about the yearbook, about all the thing, the moving parts of it. I really like the, the aspect of focusing on communication. Hmm. That's definitely a critical component of leadership too. And as you said, crowning yourself an amazing leader, there needs to be a little bit more humility there. And yeah. Just a little bit more humility. But otherwise, I would say seven out of 10. I really like that answer. Yeah, yeah. I'd say I agree with you. I'd say it's seven, 7.5. 7 it shows you that even you can have a great answer like that. But if you say like some things like, like amazing leader or something like that, you mm -hmm. can deflate the answer a little bit. We talk about the army value of selfless service. One of the ways I think he could have maybe improved a little bit there was to give credit to other people in there. He could have said, even though I organize these people, I had a great photographer with Jim, who's a fantastic photographer. And I had Jane, who did the layout, our advisor, Mr. Smith, was always supportive. You can always talk about yourself, but you can always talk also about other people you worked with who just made a, a difference. And I don't think you can ever go wrong. If you can bring a few other people in there and give them credit, uh, I think that makes it even a stronger answer. Completely agree. 100%. So good. I'm actually looking forward to doing this with Navy and Air Force. It'll be interesting to see kind of the differences between the services too. A lot of students are applying to multiple academies, multiple ROTC scholarships. So being able to pivot from Army to Air Force to Navy is really, really important. If you're impressed with the real interview examples you just saw, you witnessed firsthand the challenging questions and critical thinking required for success in Army ROTC interviews. These are just a glimpse of what you can expect. Lieutenant Colonel Kirkland and I invite you to dive deeper into our Army ROTC interview course at ROTC Consulting. Our course provides you with in-depth instruction featuring dozens of real-world answers from current cadets within Army ROTC units across the nation. Together, we'll prepare you to present yourself as a strong, capable leader ready to take on the challenges of military service. We hope you enjoyed the podcast today and wish you the best in your pursuit of an Army ROTC scholarship. Thanks for listening to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. If you like what we're doing, please leave a quick review. If you have any questions or want more information about ROTC or our consulting services, please visit our website at rotcconsulting.com. Take care, and we'll see you next time.